Hello and welcome to some more stars. Listen, Cloud Imperium have lofty goals and recently Chris Roberts said once dynamic server meshing version 2 is complete, Star Citizen should be able to handle tens of thousands of players in each shard, which is a lot of spaceships. I want to talk about what that journey looks like and there have been some dev responses, again talking about Chris Roberts's recent letter from the chairman and that journey to making Star Citizen an actual massively multiplayer online game. So I saw a thread on Spectrum. What does Chris's prediction account for? In the letter from the chairman, we have a 2023 Q4 prediction for static server meshing. Does it consider the various issues and problems that might turn up? Is it just that Q4 is the earliest that that feature might turn up? Clive Johnson from CIG responded, Server meshing is very much a research and development project, and as such, it's not possible to accurately estimate how long it will take. Chris's letter from the chairman carefully qualified the Q4 2023 date for static server meshing as something we are aiming for, but it's not guaranteed. I recommend viewing it in that light as a target that we're trying to hit, intended to focus R&D effort rather than an actual estimate of how much work is involved. My personal opinion is that this target, while ambitious, is not unreasonable and should allow enough room for us to hit some moderate speed bumps along the way. But if we encounter too many unexpected problems or enough of those problems can't be resolved quickly, then it will obviously impact the final delivery date. I thought that was a great response from Clive Johnson there. So yeah, they're planning to try and get the first stage of server meshing out by the end of the year. So that will be Alpha 4.0, um, server meshing, jump points, pyro, and a load of other jazz along with that. And it's a reasonable target. It's not 100% that they're going to hit it. I mean, I realistically think it's 50-50 at the moment, knowing CIG's sort of relative record at hitting any form of deadline. But it's nice that people agree with Chris there, that it is a date that they could meet. Now, I saw another thread as well. Is there any way to force the game to join a specific server instance or shard? The OP, the original poster, is trying out persistent entity streaming, or at least trying to, but every time they log in, they get put into a different server. When will they be able to get in the same server that they were previously on? Is there any point to persistent entity streaming until that's actually in? So, is it useful? Clive Johnson again responds, Not at the moment. There is a new matchmaking system in the works that will allow for you to join the previous sort of server automatically, among other things, but it wasn't ready in time for 3.18.0. As the letter from the chairman indicated, adding this functionality is a priority. The teams involved were discussing options before the holiday break, but as yet, this feature doesn't have an ETA. So let's talk a little bit more about what Chris said in that letter from the chairman and what they're going to be focusing on immediately after 3.18's race. So Chris Roberts said in that recent letter, the first order of business is to continue to stabilize Alpha 3.18 so we can release it to the live servers in January once the team is back from their well-earned holiday break. Then we will continue to harden persistent entity streaming, improving aspects and adding some additional quality of life features, including the ability to choose which PES persistent entity streaming shard you want to join. The current game server shard matchmaking tries to put you in the last shard that you were in when you log back in or recover from a crash. But if that shard is full, it places you in a different one. At least that is how it's supposed to work for the live build and I want to put that there because when I try and do that in the wave one PTU I incredibly rarely get on back on the same server unless I'm joining directly on a friend or I've literally just disconnected and then reconnected pretty quickly if it's within like five minutes I'm going to almost certainly get back on the same server but anything beyond that it becomes very unlikely Chris continues, in the short term, we also want to give players the choice to wait in queue for their preferred shard if it is full. So that is going to be really, really helpful. That's the sort of level of shard affinity that I would love to see. You can expect optimization and improvements to be a major sort of uh, push after 3.18 is released. They're going to really need to dial in persistent entity streaming. They're going to then want to work on the replication layer. So this is the in-memory cache that remembers all dynamic objects, states, and communicates them across to other services. This will make Star Citizen a load more crash resilient, with new servers taking over where the old server left off or where they had crashed or otherwise. And clients, because of the seamless nature of this, might not even notice that they've had a crash on that server. 
So bam, they crashed. It doesn't matter. It copied all the data across appropriately. They're just on a new server. This should also lead to less burden on servers and more stable tick rates, which will then, you know, allow for a huge amount more gameplay, much more stable gameplay, AI working a lot more as intended, stuff like that. Having this and also having shard affinity and allowing players to go straight in or at least wait on their preferred server will be a strong basis to then implement static server meshing version one. And Cloud Imperium did say that they want to move very quickly from static server meshing and static server meshing um, version one that has the preset sort of servers controlling different areas of space. But after they've sort of dialed that in and, and improved that, they'll let, then want to move on very quickly to dynamic server meshing version two. This will allow various zones to be assigned as servers based on population and is significantly more resource efficient than static server meshing. As if there's no one in a zone, then no server needs to be running that. Dynamic server meshing version two will come up after this, organizing dynamic objects in one zone into different groups based on which objects can interact or collide with one another, then distributing these groups between servers to help balance simulation load. This is the sort of time that we're going to see different rooms literally being able to be servers on a, not a whim, but um, based on population. So a ship can be a server, a room in a ship can be on a server, uh, a space station can be a server, all the individual parts of a space station can be a server, and that will be spun up and down based on the needs of the game. And all those servers will be nested in each other and literally can dissolve into one another. This is when Chris said, at this point, we should be able to handle tens of thousands of players all playing in the same persistent entity streaming universe shard, bringing Star Citizen much closer to the ultimate goal of having a huge living universe densely populated with players and AI. But as soon as they have static server meshing with Alpha 4.0, they will be able to open the Star Citizen universe to other star systems, starting with Pyro. But we also know that they've put a lot of work into Nyx and obviously the Odin system, which is where Squadron 42 is largely based. So yes, we should see that shard affinity stuff, being able to wait for a server, getting into the server that you want more often, more easily at some point in 2023, if I had to guess, probably the middle of the year, they're working on that replication layer. They're working on trying to get 4.0 and static server meshing out the door. Just how quickly can they move from static server meshing to dynamic server meshing? Probably and hopefully at some point in 2024 is when we'll have dynamic server meshing, but only time will tell. To be an MMO, to be a massively multiplayer online game, Cloud Imperium does need to nail server meshing so that we can have tens of thousands of players in a shard. But what do you think? Do you think Cloud Imperium could potentially make that target or prediction for Q4 having Alpha 4.0 server meshing and pyro jump points, all of that sort of jazz in the game? Or do you think that feature set will inevitably be delayed. If you want to know more about that letter from the chairman, please take a look at my full reading of it and then my breakdown uh, of talking about some other bits of it in, in some recent videos. Um, just check out my channel for Star Citizen content. It's a new year, time for resolutions, a brighter future. I'll make myself better each day. Or I could just stay at home and play computer games. But what if someone steals my house or bank while I'm otherwise preoccupied on the internet? NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer. It's probably the best VPN deal of 2023 already. Not only does it provide security, anonymity, and accessibility on the interwebs, but I haven't heard of anyone with NordVPN having their house stolen. Thanks, NordVPN. Now no one will know what type of degenerate anime I watch. Get NordVPN, you filthy animal. You deserve it. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For January, we are giving away an Argo Raft, the reinforced advanced freight transport ship a dedicated cargo hauler that should see some additional gameplay in 2023. This also comes with a Star Citizen game package and lifetime insurance. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during the month. More details in the description below. If you'd like to further support the channel, then please consider becoming a YouTube member with the join button under my videos. You could even become a Patreon. There's links below to that. But liking, subscribing, commenting goes a huge way to help the channel grow. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the verse.